Everybody be cool. You be cool. Well, here I am back out in the brewery again. Um, new addition. I have a fridge for my fermentation now, so I don't have to chase the temperature anymore. Uh, I picked it up. It's used. I think something was wrong with it. I can't remember what now. Um, I think they just wanted to get rid of it for a tenner. So it was a bit of a bonus. £10 for a working fridge. However, I have noticed it's got one of those, which freezer compartment, which isn't going to be very helpful because somehow I've got to try and get rid of that. Um, and then obviously take all this bump out, take the tray out, side tray, this glass shelf, this glass shelf, and make a base in it. I've got my fermentation bucket and we have issues which I have to resolve. I think having a, a guess where that might be sat on there. I think it'd be fine with a smaller airlock and if I can do something with that. I've seen others where they've taken all the mechanism out and bent the cold plate down the back. But we shall see on that one. I've also recently purchased, not the Nerf guns because that's Tom's, um, a little tube heater which obviously go in the bottom and I was going to use the timer, not timer, the thermometer control. So I have got one, so you can just see in there. Move out of the way. I think it's the ST100 or 110, I think it is. Um, and that was used in my old kettle, which is here, which I sort of still use just to brew some water uh, to top this up and other things, just add some hot water on tap, so to speak. Um, but the thermometer, uh, the temperature gauge isn't very accurate. It reads probably about probably seven degrees lower on that than the actual temperature. So rather than use that or get another one with some um, plugs, I have just purchased one of these, an ink bird which seems quite straightforward and the money on that would have been probably the same as me adjusting that or adapting that getting some plugs getting a little unit to put it all in um, and it's quite straightforward with the heating and cooling sockets which would be great one for the fridge and one for this little baby when i get it up and running so there we are next project somehow got to uh, bastardize that that'll be fun so far there's the insulation bits out and i've got this wonderful coil it's like freezer coil in here which i'll be honest with you i haven't got a clue what i'm going to do with yet so i'm taking the insulation out underneath uh which is all there on the floor of the fridge and then we've got this coil which uh, on previous uh, videos I've seen it's had like a plate up here down the back and along the base and what's been done is that this bottom plate has been bent back against the wall so it's remained intact but still freezing if you know what I mean well I got this coil and I don't know what to do I think there's a leak on part of it over here which are, there's a few like scratches just there but I don't think it's penetrated bit wet, I don't know if it's condensation, um, doesn't seem to be too bad, um, but it actually seems exactly what I've just said, it's a coil, because it comes down from here, goes round up, goes back round again, and then goes in the coil. So what I'm thinking of doing is removing the rest of this insulation, and trying to prise it off of this one on the side, and maybe push it all back to the back and maybe tape it up against here or something uh, all the metal that was around it is now sat there on the floor which is very fun getting off not okay so this is where we are yeah no a pretty sight is it managed to get all the sort of the tubing the coil out so it's all kind of loose now what I'm going to do with it I kind of don't know 
it comes through the back here and then it just coils round all the way to that corner and then it goes back in again. Um, I've just turned it on because I haven't even tried to see if it worked yet which probably would have been handy and it does on this cold one coming out here you can start seeing it it's getting like frosty now um, that's cold that's starting to freeze so yes it is working and I thought I did damage there's water but I don't know if that's condensation or okay so here we are with an update all cleaned out now at the bottom and at the top what I've managed to do is get the coil, sorry, move back a bit, get the coil and push it back as far as I can. So, I've got the coolant coming out here, which I'm trying to see if I can fix that up a bit, just to get it out of the way. And then that goes back and the rest of them are all at the back and I've got cable ties on them. Um, and the bin fits in perfectly. Well, bin kind of fits in perfectly. I'll try and grab it from some here. That's where it's approximately going to sit. Uh, I haven't done the shelf yet which will go in there and obviously the heater at the bottom. But um, yeah I'll put a small airlock in or I'll get something else knocked up. But there we go. That's that kind of stage of it done. Um, also apologise for doing it on the camera on my phone like this quite rough and ready um, I was going to do something further back here you know and film it uh, but my daughter nicked the tripod to do her own filming so unfortunately I've been left with this that's why it's all been done in bits but there we go uh, next stage over there is to cut out the base get the heater fixed to the bottom and that's it so here we are now the heater is in uh, drilled a bit little hole to get the lead out and uh, get a plug on it for some reason this heater didn't come with a plug um, I stuck the two blocks down with good old no more nails and I have now got my board a shelf to fit in I've, I've cut it I've fitted it and it does work and I've gone away to drill loads of little holes in it to let the heat come through Unfortunately, that was the biggest uh, drill bit. It's like the wood auger drill bit uh, I have. I think it's only sort of an inch. So I've had to put loads of little holes in for the heat to come up. But there will be a gap at the front as well for the heat. Um, and the final thing I've got to do is with the ink bird. I have got the temperature sensor, which I'm going to have to put inside. Drill a hole down the side somewhere. Bring it in round about midway and uh, that'll be done right then I'm gonna fit this in I'm gonna have to turn the camera off because as I said previously my daughter has borrowed the tripod so I'm finding it's very awkward to film and do work um, so I'll put this in and then look at finding a drill bit for the temperature sensor okay moving on there finally got it in position next to the Nerf Arsenal and the toys. Um, I've fitted it up. I've got the ink bridge set up now. I haven't done anything on it as of yet. I've just literally just plugged it in. I have and plugged in. I've got the heater plugged in here and the fridge plugged in here. I've got the temperature sensor going in the side, which is just here, which I'll probably just tape in a little bit. And I'm just going to turn it on now. Okay, let's try this setting this, shall we? So press set for three seconds. And then that's the set temperature that you need. So I'll put it down to 20. There, press set again. That's the heat difference, I think. It goes up to probably 22 before it cools in. Maybe turn that down a bit maybe maybe one and a half Let's see how that goes same with cooling I'll do that to one and a half that's the heat alarm I'm gonna be here a long time to turn that down because this will never get 120 
Um, I'll probably look at setting it to about 40. Um, if it gets that, obviously the beer is buggered, but it's more of a safety feature not to heat too much. And it takes ages to get down to 40 because I tried it just now, so bear with me. Cooling alarm. Ugh. Let's take that up because it will never get down to minus 40. There, for this, I'll just set it to 5 uh, PT. That's the compressor delay. Uh, put on for one minute. Uh, calibration. Don't know centigrade or Fahrenheit and centigrade, and that is it. So you should press it for set for three seconds again, and there we go. It's set. I set it at 20 degrees, which is the SV, the set value, and the top one PV is obviously its current value, and it's 21 degrees. So I've set the compressor delay at one minute so it'll probably be one minute before it actually turns in or switches on so I'll come back to this in a minute go as I said I had the uh, compressor delay at one minute it's just kicked in as you can see the cooling lights come on the temperature is 21.4 degrees and you may or may not hear the fridge is on so I shall open it Now these will start to cool up and chill the thing down. Okay, so set it at 20. Uh, the cooling's just gone off now because it is at 20, so be nicely fermenting in there now. and it probably goes down one and a half degrees so I may change the differential instead of one and a half to one because I think what's going to happen is obviously it's still cooling it's 19.7 now that's probably going to go down to 18.5 before the heater comes in so the temperature will probably be around about 18 degrees so I'll be chasing it around that so I might have to change it a bit when I actually do a brew but it kind of works which is awesome yeah definitely feel cold in here you can see oh you might be able to see it the frost on it because that's the, the cooling element uh, I'll probably end up getting condensation and well I'll worry about that when it happens um, but yeah oh, this is just an old temperature gauge just to see if it works but it's it's kind of out or it's taking its time to actually match perhaps if I put it in the middle. But anyway, awesome, it works. So, I'll be starting a new brew soon. I have, get that out, from Galaxy, and it is Dennis King's Galaxy Delights, which I have ready to go in. I just wanted to sort out my plumbing for my cooler which is all done now I've got an extra um, hose just take it outside a minute got one hose here which is the feed put down the side and the other hose here to go to the drain um, before I collect the water coming out and it took forever I had to fill one of the buckets up one of these buckets stop it drain it and carry on but now I just get it going and this is much better even though I had similar fittings before it's much much neater um, so yeah that is kind of ready to go get that little baby in action again and produce me some beer and now I've got my fermenting fridge ah, good old no one else didn't work so good there oh feel the heating on there Probably just kicked it in a bit. 
17.1, what's going to happen with it? Just felt the heater and it was warm. No. But yeah, I, I think that has moved over because when I pulled the lead through the cable, because it's quite a small tight squeeze there, it just probably pulled it over a bit, but it's still secure, still does the job. I'm happy with that. Keep getting through here. As I said, there's a gap at the front. So when, get that rubbish thing out. Just clear that rubbish off. I'm gonna get a different airlock that fits in there. Kind of sweet. And I'll get rid of that thing, because it doesn't close. That's one of these things. You live and learn, don't you? Yeah, I can cut that off, that is no problem. Get the Dremel on that. But there we have it, a nice fermentation fridge. Brilliant. So, there we go, that's my fermentation fridge. A little bit disjointed, didn't help with the video, and my daughter having the tripod, but there we go, that's what happens in a family. Um, well, hopefully you enjoyed it and learned a little bit from it. Um, I'd like you to like it if you want, subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more or just see me mess up as I usually do and find out how not to do things. There we go. But um, hopefully soon I'll be getting the brew in the box there in that baby in the next couple of days because everything's set up ready to go now and now I've got my trusty fridge, it's all go. So like, subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you very much.